For decades, the moon's far side has been a symbol of the unknown, always facing away from Earth, always hiding in silence. We've seen its images, we've mapped its contours, but we've never truly understood it. Until now. When China's Chang'e 6 mission touched down on this forgotten hemisphere, they weren't just chasing rocks or dust. They were pursuing whispers, unanswered questions, forgotten impacts, and geological ghosts buried beneath billions of years of silence. And what they found wasn't a barren wasteland. It was a revelation, a discovery so disruptive, so precise and disturbing, that it not only forced scientists to rewrite the moon's history, but made some question whether we ever understood it at all. And when a Nobel Prize-winning physicist broke silence to warn the global community, it became clear this wasn't just a scientific anomaly. It was something that could redefine our place in the cosmos. At first glance, the phrase ocean on the moon sounds like fiction, but the truth revealed by Chang'e 6 was no less astonishing. Beneath the dust of the moon's far side lies an ancient sea, not of water, but of magma, a massive brooding body of molten rock that once surged beneath the lunar surface like blood through unseen veins. This magma ocean, long theorized but never confirmed, rewrote what we knew about the moon's formation. Its existence hints at a level of volcanic activity far beyond what any space agency had imagined. But it wasn't just the presence of this sea, it was where it was found. The far side, always thought to be colder, drier, and geologically simpler than the near side, turned out to have had two major volcanic phases, extending hundreds of millions of years apart. This sustained activity suggests that the moon's interior once pulsed with energy, and that energy may still echo beneath the surface. And if that's true, if the moon was more alive than dead, then it may still hold secrets buried in its hot, silent heart. When China's mission returned with samples from the moon's far side, the expectation was simple. More basalt, more lunar dust, more of the same. But instead, researchers found something else. Deep within those samples were traces of isotopes, uranium, lead, and hydrogen, in ratios that didn't add up. These anomalies raised questions not just about the moon's surface, but about its very birth. If the moon formed from a massive impact between Earth and a Mars-sized planet, as the current theory suggests, its interior composition should be relatively homogeneous. But the far side told a different story. It's drier than expected, with unexpected concentrations of volatile elements in the wrong places. This suggests that the far side and near side weren't shaped by the same forces at all. Worse still, embedded in the glassy spherules formed from ancient eruptions, scientists found distinct layering patterns, microscopic capsules of the moon's violent history, preserved like time bombs of truth. These time capsules have now forced researchers to challenge everything we thought we knew. The moon is not a monolithic remnant of Earth's past. It's a split identity, two worlds stitched together by trauma. But perhaps the most unsettling findings didn't come from the surface, but from the sky. Using AI-powered algorithms, scientists at NASA and China's space agency analyzed high-resolution data from orbiting satellites. What they found stunned even the most skeptical minds. New seas, ancient lava plains long buried beneath irregular lunar layers, known as cryptomeria. These hidden oceans, undetectable by the human eye, were suddenly visible through machine learning. AI had recognized the subtle thermal patterns, gravitational deviations, and mineral echoes of something ancient. It was as if the moon had been screaming these secrets for centuries, but only now had someone built the ears to hear it. And those seas, those ghost oceans, suggest one terrifying truth. The moon's volcanic history was not an isolated event. It was global, it was sustained, and it was angry. And if it held that much internal energy, what else is still sleeping beneath its skin? As the data poured in, the gravitational map of the moon began to take shape. And that's when NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory made a disturbing discovery. The moon doesn't react to Earth's gravity uniformly. The visible side, our familiar moon face, distorts under Earth's pull. But the far side, it resists. The deformation on the near side reaches up to 72% more than the far side. Why? The answer shocked everyone. The moon's visible side is rich in thorium, a radioactive element that generates heat and softens the mantle. This makes the surface more malleable, more vulnerable. 
but the far side, colder, harder, defiant, reacts differently. This means the moon isn't just asymmetrical in appearance, it's asymmetrical in behavior. In gravitational terms, it's as if the moon has a dark mind, a personality split by radioactive fever and volcanic scars, a body that remembers pain. And if that's true, then maybe the moon isn't just a satellite. Maybe it's a cosmic relic still recovering from a violent past we barely understand. One of the most baffling anomalies emerged when Chang'e 6 performed a subsurface radar scan near the rim of the South Pole Aitken Basin, the oldest and deepest impact crater on the moon. Buried beneath layers of compact regolith and volcanic ash, the radar returned a void, massive, symmetrical, and with clear geometric walls. At first, this was dismissed as a lava tube, a known feature of lunar geology. But then, the dimensions changed everything. This wasn't just a tube, it was a chamber, nearly 400 meters wide and perfectly arched, situated at a depth too deep for natural collapse yet too stable to be accidental. Within the echoes of the scan, a faint signal bounced back. A reverberation. A ping. Something resonated. That's not how rock behaves. Not unless it's hollow. Not unless it's engineered. Chinese scientists have withheld much of this data from public reports, but leaks and whispers among astrophysical forums suggest they've found something they were not prepared to explain. A room? A vault? Or perhaps a scar left by something that was never meant to be uncovered? When the samples retrieved from the crater were analyzed under spectrometry, one fragment stood out. It didn't match any known mineral from lunar geology, not even those found in high-pressure zones or from previous impact melts. This shard, no larger than a fingernail, had an anomalous light-reflective index and internal crystalline structure that didn't align with silicates, metals, or volcanic glass. Under polarized light, it created interference patterns resembling metamaterials, substances engineered to manipulate electromagnetic waves. The Nobel laureate who later warned the public, his identity redacted from official releases, stated that the shard behaved as if it were designed to be invisible in specific frequencies. That's not a coincidence. That's intention. While publicly China refers to it as Lunar Glass Variant 6, internal memos reportedly call it Mirror Stone. If true, this means we are no longer talking about geology. We are talking about technology, or at least the relic of it. Something that may have sat dormant, forgotten, beneath a sea of gray for millennia. Around day 12 of the mission, ground control in Beijing reported an unusual delay in telemetry from Chang'e 6. The rover, moving slowly across the basin floor, began sending back scrambled signals. Data packets corrupted, thermal readings inverted, timestamps misaligned by fractions of a second. Engineers blamed lunar dust interference. But the signal distortion had a pattern, one that repeated every 26 minutes. It was subtle, almost imperceptible but it was too perfect. A waveform not caused by machinery, but something else. And it only occurred when the rover passed near the subsurface chamber. One retired radio engineer working with ESA later admitted, it was like something beneath the surface, was listening back, not blocking us, not attacking, just observing. A passive echo, a presence. And though it faded once the rover left the area, it left behind a simple truth. The moon wasn't as quiet as we thought. Something buried deep still reacts. Normally, discoveries of this magnitude ignite global excitement, press conferences, collaborations, papers published across journals. But this time, silence fell. China released only fragments of their findings, avoiding live briefings and canceling international panels. NASA responded with tight-lipped statements. ESA offered nothing and the Nobel Prize winner who broke ranks? He vanished from public appearances. The scientific community, normally hungry for prestige, froze. Some say they're still processing. Others believe they've been told to stand down. What if this discovery wasn't just geological? What if it carries geopolitical weight? A technological relic on the moon, one that predates humanity, could shift global power overnight. Whoever controls it wouldn't just dominate space. They'd dominate history. Perhaps that's why we're not hearing more. Not because there's nothing to say, but because what's been found is too big to speak of, too powerful, too dangerous. And now, the world waits, paralyzed, not by fiction, 
but by the terrifying possibility that the moon we see every night has never been what we thought it was. For millennia, the moon has watched over Earth as a symbol of serenity, a quiet, glowing sentinel in our night sky. But now, with China's Chang'e 6 pulling back the veil on its darkened face, we're beginning to realize that we weren't watching the moon all this time. It was watching us. Every crater we thought was empty, every silent valley we believed lifeless, each now whispers with possibility. We uncovered an ancient volcanic heart still pulsing beneath the surface. We unearthed materials no science can name. We found symmetrical voids too perfect to be natural, electromagnetic echoes responding to our presence, and worst of all, intentional silence from those in power. Because what's been discovered might not be ours to reveal. It might not even be from this chapter of humanity. A Nobel laureate stepped forward to warn the world, but instead of answers, we got absence. Instead of clarity, we got coded ambiguity. And now, the question is no longer whether the moon was once alive. It's whether it still is. Whether something older than us, something buried beneath the cold dust of time, is beginning to stir again now that we've knocked too loudly on the door. We thought the moon was our neighbor. But what if it's not? What if it's our mirror? What do you think is really hidden beneath the surface of the moon? Was it once a cradle of life? A station? A message? Let us know in the comments below. And if this discovery gave you chills, share it. Because if the moon has been keeping a secret this long, then the moment we uncovered it might change the future of Earth forever. Subscribe, hit the notification bell, and stay with us, because the moon just blinked back, and this story has only just begun.